Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. Today is a very special day. I have wanted the Savage X Flux since it came out over two years ago. Here in Canada, this truck was a thousand bucks, $999.99. A few times it went on sale. It dropped to, I think, $7.99 once. And I even think I'd one time mentioned it in a video where I was out of town. I was in Ottawa. I knew the truck was on sale for $7.99. So instead of ordering online, when I was in Ottawa, I thought, oh, it'd be fun for me and my son to go into great hobbies and buy it. We get there. The truck was no longer on sale. They didn't have a, any type of promo codes or anything else they could use to get it down. So unfortunately, I didn't get it. Two weeks ago, I'm online. I'm plucking around, checking things out because I've always wanted this truck. Like I mentioned, guys, I've always gone in to see if it's on sale, promote, you know, the promos, all that kind of fun stuff. And it was four hundred dollars off so from 9.99 down to 5.99.99 and that's good because there are a few parts that you need to buy with this truck there's a little bit of money that you got to spend so what we are going to be doing today is this and this might be a bit of a lengthy video guys but again i have wanted this truck now for over two years this is like i don't want to say a unicorn because i don't think that's the right way to use that word when it comes to this truck but it's something that I've, I myself, guys, have really wanted. I do buy quite a bit of trucks. I, I have a lot of fun with RC. And this was the one truck, just because of the price and because what I what I heard about it and I knew it needed, I just decided to wait till it went on sale. Now, in this video, we are going to be slowing things down a little bit. We will do the usual first thing, which is unboxing the truck, getting it out, getting it on the bench, all that kind of fun stuff. But then we're going to go back to the box. We're going to check out all the box art, all that kind of fun stuff. Go over some of the details on the truck, show you some of the HPI mod parts that I bought for the truck that I think are kind of must-haves from everything I've seen on this truck. But again, guys, we're just going to be taking it slow. I am really excited to see this truck. I've never seen one in person. I've owned many, many, many Savages in my time. I'll probably throw up some pictures right now on the screen so that you can see I've had nitros, I've had brushless. One of the first, actually, I think it was the number sixth video I ever uploaded to YouTube was an HBI Savage Flux HP. It was kind of like your basic, your first Flux type thing. And that was a horrible video to watch because it'll make you sick because we filmed it on uh, those old school flips, not a flip phone, but the flip camera. And there's like no stabilization whatsoever. But that was one of the first trucks that I really got into driving, bashing, backflipping, all that kind of stuff. And the Savage guys, even though it's not necessarily called like a stunt truck, it kind of shares the same wheelbase with trucks like the Outcast, the Notorious, the Jambo, all that kind of stuff. But really when it comes to the Savages, they actually have a Savage XL, which is more like your standard size one eight scale muggy. So yeah, there's a whole lot going on guys, but either way, let's get into that box and check it out. All right, so quickly going over the Savage X box, you can see over here, we got RTR, four wheel drives, 2.4 gigs, 17 millimeter hexes, 6S LiPo, electric, factory assembled. I didn't notice waterproof now. That might not seem all that new to a lot of people, but I wasn't, I didn't think this truck had like a sealed receiver box or anything like that. So maybe they've changed up their receivers and they're now waterproof. So we'll check that during the video. Down here, you got 60 miles an hour, 6S compatible. You got your ESC and your motor. I'm pretty sure the 60 might be with a different pinion, but I'm not sure. You got your wheels and tires. You now have a center skid plate. Back in the day, original Savage, this was all open. You always had to buy like an RPM skid for it. You have your easy access twin battery boxes. I love the fact that it is a piece of Velcro and not some weird clamping system. This outer tray is, but then the actual battery itself is just held in with Velcro. You have your 17 millimeter hexes here, so you can see the hex and the wheel nut. We have a lot of the same information, so the RTR and the waterproof, all that kind of fun stuff. The wheels and tires again. You do have the bulletproof gears. We'll get into that in more detail, just because there's a few things you need to know about those. You have the, we'll get into this too, the captured hinge pins, three millimeter TVP, that's the twin vertical plate chassis, the twin battery boxes again, ESC motor, heavy, super heavy duty drivetrain. Again, guys, I just wanted to quickly show you some of the box art, but we're gonna get into all that stuff into details very, very soon. All right, guys, again, like I mentioned, this is the first time I've ever seen this truck. I've never seen one in person. I've obviously watched lots of videos on it, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, first thought just by looking in the box 
is that, yeah, this body's bigger than I thought. The truck, being that this is a Savage, and then again, guys, like I mentioned, the Savage XL, which they consider the XL version of the truck, is the same as most trucks, and even smaller than, let's say, your 1.7 scale Big Rock and all that kind of stuff. But because of the size of this body, this truck now looks bigger than I thought it was going to be. HBI transmitter. We'll go over all this stuff, guys, during the video. I probably won't be using this. I'll be swapping in one of my radio link receivers. <laughs> oh, man, this thing looks good. All right, guys, I'm going to get it out of the box. Get it on the bench. I don't think you guys want to see the top of my head while I do this. But, yeah, this thing looks wicked. Oh, oh geez. I like it. All right, we've also got the manual in here. This is definitely not a very gracious unboxing. But, oh man. Yeah, this thing looks awesome. All right, guys, I'm gonna get everything kind of situated. I'm gonna get the camera faced the proper way because right now I can see what you guys are seeing. Quickly, I'll do that. And uh, yeah, this thing looks awesome. I am so happy. All right, guys, here it is, the HBI Savage X Flux. I'm going to be referring to this truck a lot, I think, during the video as the version 2, as the newer Savage, even though this truck, like I mentioned, guys, has been out for two years. The first kind of gen Savage that went through, obviously, a few different remakes, and they've obviously, they changed up parts on it. They never really, they always kind of gave it like a different name, Savage X, Savage X, 4 point this, Flux, Flux HP, XL, um, I can't even, a lot of names, as well as there was just so much customization available for the truck that you could really change things up. I had built a lot of different trucks from standard wheelbase going into the XL wheelbase to different chassis to all that kind of fun stuff, power systems, you name it. They were always a lot of fun. The orange on this thing looks incredible. I am super, super it's funny, many people talk about this body and they don't like it. And I, I, I don't actually get that. I actually think the body looks killer. It gives it a neat look. It's not something like every other truck uses or every other truck uses or anything like that. It's not, well, hell, I kind of want to say there's a little bit of Ford sort of look going on, but it doesn't look like a Raptor or anything like that, which a lot of trucks today kind of have that look type thing to them. Let's see, we still got body pin it back here. Come on. Now, obviously, guys, while I do this, there's no quick release or anything like that. Everything on here is old school. It's body pins, it's body posts. <laughs> it looks so good. I hope people out there right now are watching this. If you're a fan of a Savage or you've owned Savage before, that you appreciate this. Because the one thing I really notice right now is the low center of the truck even though savages are considered high center of gravity trucks and let's face it when you get the body on it does come up quite a bit and yes it is a little bit higher guys under here than let's say cratons and sledges and all that stuff i do find that they've really brought everything down this is to me sitting low this is low it's sitting on the bench low i don't know how many times i can say low there but Guys, this body looks so good. I, a lot of, every, almost every person I watched unbox, unbox this truck or talk about it complained about the body. Now, we will get into some issues about the body, but I'm referring to the looks, the color, all that kind of fun stuff. I think this looks just wicked. All the textures, the way they've got the flat, they got a little bit of gloss in there, not too, too much, but the orange and the gray looks just killer. The, it's kind of neat, the nitro version of this truck, it's reversed. Instead of having the orange into this kind of dark gray, it starts off with the dark gray into orange. And I'm kind of glad on the flux that they did the orange first because I think it kind of makes the front end with the black grill and all the stuff looks better with the orange in the background. Now, before we get going with the truck itself, I just wanted to show kind of a comparison between the HBI Savage and my Sledge. The reason I'm doing this is the Savage has this reputation of being a high center of gravity truck, super tall, all that kind of stuff. And yes, everything does sit up a little bit higher. 
But what I just want to do is bring you guys in so you can see they're not all that different when it comes to the lower part of the chassis and all that kind of fun stuff. And even when you really start thinking like where your batteries are going to sit in this truck compared to where the battery is sitting in the sledge, they're not that far off. And I think the only thing that really makes this truck sit higher is that, yeah, you have the ESC right at the top here where obviously it sits down in the chassis on the sledge. The motor is maybe a little bit higher. Again, I'm not saying that this is not a higher truck. I'm not saying this is not a high center of gravity monster truck. All I'm saying is they are not that far off. Even on my sledge, so I've got the RPM bumper, which is very, very low, but you can see where the hinge pins are. Again, they're not guys that far off. I'd have to take the tires off to get you guys a better angle, but again, just showing you guys that, I just want to give you guys an idea about the actual size of the Savage and all that kind of fun stuff. Obviously, this is my fully built sledge. This thing is a beast. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a comparison of the Savage with my Habao Hyper MTX also, and oh man... <laughs> Wow, why can't you get your bodies right? A little bit off subject, guys. Look at the MTX with the Savage body on it. That looks insane. Like, absolutely killer. It's to the point now where I think I'm going to definitely have to pick up another Savage body. I'd like to find a clear one and paint it for the MTX because that looks awesome. And surprisingly enough... The Savage doesn't look all that bad with the MTX body on it. Not that I'll be doing that or anything like that, but it doesn't actually look that bad. If anything, this body does actually look better on the Savage than it does on the MTX. But again, I just wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of the Savage and the Hyper MTX beside each other. The MTX and the Savage share a lot of kind of similarities when it comes to their bumper layouts and stuff like that. They're both kind of high up in front of the shock towers. The MTX has a C-style chassis, or more like a U. So unlike the Savage that has twin vertical plates, so you can actually remove each plate. So each side of the chassis would come off. When it comes to the MTX, it's like a U. So you have the sides, but then it goes into to a tub and then comes up the other side. I don't know what I would consider to be stronger. I'm thinking the MTX chassis, just because, it, again, it's that U. It's all one piece. But then there's also, guys, a lot of support between the Savage, and there's a lot sitting in between it, kind of the same as the MTX. Now, moving on, I removed the two battery boxes from the side of the chassis, as well as, guys, the little top cover over the ESC and the receiver tray. Before we get into that, though, before we kind of get into more details, I do got to thank a few people. One is Vaz from Ozzy RC Playground, and the other is Chaos RC. Both those guys I kind of was talking to while I was buying this truck, and both of them were sharing their input, letting me know uh, a few mods to do to help kind of keep things alive. And I, I think it was Chaos RC. Actually, it was Chaos RC that had told me about using washers on the rod ends and the pillow balls type thing just to kind of keep them from holding in and all that kind of fun stuff. Certain parts to make sure that I go over first. I think it was Vaz was talking about the motor mount. And surprisingly enough, yes, my two front bolts on the motor mount, and I'll show those later, they were tight. They were snug. They Both of them were not moving. But the two back ones took about a good three quarters turn to kind of snug them up. So again, thanks to those guys for doing that for me. It definitely helped. Gets me a little bit more ready. I am somebody that I will always kind of tell people, make sure you go over your truck, check all your bolts, all that kind of fun stuff. But then at the same time, you're excited to get out and run the truck. And it's funny right now because what's keeping me from running this truck, well, there's two things. One, it's first thing in the morning and it's minus nine, so it's cold. The second, and I'm almost a little embarrassed to say this, I don't have any solder. So I ran out of solder a while ago, sort of forgot about it. When I bought this truck, I was like, oh yeah, I need solder. I'd gone on Amazon, ordered some, thinking, oh yeah, it'll be here in time, and it hasn't. So I can't even run this truck if I tried. It has Dean's connectors on it, as you can see right there. If you're wondering why this truck has Dean's, it makes no sense. It's a 4S 6S truck. Dean's have been out forever. However, if you go on HPI's website and you look at all their LiPos and all their batteries, they all have Dean's connectors on them. So I sort of understand, I guess, why HPI gets these trucks and gets those ESCs with Dean's connectors on them because all their batteries have Dean's. Personally, I think the company should spend a couple of bucks, hire a company, send your batteries, send your ESCs off, get these things switched over to XT90s to do it right. All right, since we're talking about Dean's connectors, we might as well talk about the ESC and the electronics in the truck. The ESC is a rebranded hobby wing. It's something like WP something 150. It's the ESC that comes in the Habaos. It's come in 
early Losi trucks as well. It's a 4S, 6S ESC. The issue with it is it does have a six volt BEC. So this servo is 10 kilograms, which is pretty low for a monster truck. It doesn't have any speed. I've watched a few videos. Everybody complains about it. When you have a bigger BEC, something like a 7.4, I have many, many times cranked the BEC up to 7.4, even on a six volt servo, especially if it's like an RTR servo. And I've never had an issue. I've never even burnt any of them out. Unfortunately, because this is six volt, I won't be able to do that. I have a big Savox servo in my Kronos XDR right now that runs 500 ounces of torque at six volts that I will be dropping into this truck come summer. But for the winter now, I'll probably just stick with the stock setup. Everything is waterproof, guys. So ESC, servo, and even the receiver. So on that note, I think it's an RF50, RF50. Yeah, RF50, it is waterproof. So I probably will get out the first few runs running the full stock electronics. So even the radio, all that kind of fun stuff. I think earlier on I had mentioned that I'd be changing it. But when I realized that this is a waterproof receiver, I thought, hey, why not out, go out and give it a try? Motor is, and again, guys, I'm just guessing, a rebranded Hobbywing. It's a 2200 kV. Super nice. The one thing with these trucks being that they're, you know, the shorter wheelbase, the fact that they're lighter, 2200 kV is going to give us great RPMs. It does come with a 16 tooth pinion and I think it's a 43 tooth spur. And I've even seen where people have upped the pinion with the stock setup. So this is going to be cool, guys. I have a feeling this truck is going to be blistering fast. It's going to be a little rocket. Now, earlier on, I had removed the battery trays and the point of me doing that was to show you guys the twin vertical plates, the TVPs. That's what they refer to them on the Savage. Again, you could remove all the screws and one of these plates will come off. Now, in the past, I have seen it and I've done it myself where I have bent this chassis. I think on one, I even cracked it. I don't know what the aftermarket support is like now for this truck. I have seen Fastlane Machining used to be a huge company with Savages. They still seem to make a lot of chassis for older Savages. I'm not sure if they have them for the new one. The other company is Elza Racing. They're really well known for their Sen Colossus XC, the Sen Reaper chassis and stuff like that. They usually thicken them up a little bit. I think they're usually around three millimeters, 70, 75. Some of them have even gone a little bit thicker. I'm pretty sure guys, this chassis here is only two and a half millimeters thick. So that will be a bit of a concern two and a half millimeters thick on the chassis. When you start taking, I don't even want to say huge jumps, guys. I'm going to just say average jumps and you're coming down in that impact. It'll be interesting to see how the chassis holds up. Now, I'm not going to say anything more about it because I haven't driven the truck yet. I haven't jumped the truck yet. So until I do, I'm not going to sit there and say that that's going to be a weak point or anything like that. However, I can talk about my past experience with them. And like I mentioned, guys, I have had issues but moving on to a few other things, I just want to quickly get out of the way in this video. They finally got rid of those stupid little wheel nuts. It's now just a true 17 millimeter hex with a 17 millimeter wheel nut. Good to go. You don't have to worry about that weird flange nut. You have, they finally fixed, and I'll zoom in a bit to show you guys. Now, what I'm referring to has to do with the upper arms and your hinge pin. So right here, you guys can see these little kind of caps. They probably, if you've never seen this truck before, just look like something that's supposed to be there. But on earlier Savages, they weren't. And these parts right here, so your bumper supports, you can see where they kind of come out here. They would, were their, what actually held that hinge pin in. So what would happen is these would make their way out. They would work their way out like this and you'd come back or you'd walk up to your truck and you'd find your hinge pin out here, shove it back in. Now, very quickly, everybody realized you just threw a zip tie around this and it kept everything together and you didn't have that problem what obviously sticking a zip tie was not a cool thing but now that they've actually done it right they've got these sitting up there you can see that the bumper you can see now how it's going to flex a lot more because before again you had a zip tie holding these things together now that's not the case so you can see how they kind of work out a little bit so I think that's going to help guys just in obviously when you're taking a crash in the front bumper or the rear bumper, you won't have to worry about one, your hinge pins coming out and two, this is going to allow a little bit more flex. Now, the one thing I did not want to get into this video, I was going to save it for kind of the part two was to go over a concern that I have, because I feel like if anybody has watched any videos on this new Savage, you have heard about diff failures and I've seen it from the internal gear. So all your bevel gears, right out to your ring and pinion. Now, 
Again, guys, second video, we'll get more into this, but I have purchased quite a bit of parts to fix that as well as, and I've got to give this guy a shout out because he started talking to me before I even expressed interest in buying any parts off him. And that was Dranko Precision. I'm going to leave a link to his website. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. And before I even started talking to him about his parts and getting into it, we kind of got on just a general conversation on Facebook and he started telling me all these things to do, you know, ways I can maximize the diffs, different sets of gears, gears that worked for him, gears that didn't work for him and all that stuff. And he actually spent like probably a half an hour back and forth before we even talked about purchasing or getting any parts off him. So now the few of the parts I am going to be picking off him are his diff cups. The stock diff cups in a Savage are the cast aluminum. And again, guys, I'm not sure on what exactly the failure is with the diffs. There's a few things going on. I'm just going to try to build it right and get it so that this truck is solid. So I'm going to be going with his machine diff cups as well as he also has the CVDs for the truck. So this truck does not come with CVDs, dog groans, front and rear. And that is something I definitely guys want to change. He has got some really nice parts. Again, I've got some links in the description. You guys can go check them out. My goal with this truck, and if I haven't already mentioned it, guys, is just a solid performer. I feel like that first edition Savage Flux HP from I think 13 years ago, the video is, there's a running video on this channel. Again, like I mentioned guys, it was the sixth video I ever uploaded to YouTube. That truck was solid. Those diffs took it. And unfortunately, HBI almost sort of kind of misleads you because they still throw the word bulletproof around. But then if you look at it, it's forged bulletproof differentials and gears and all that kind of stuff yet you can go on the website you can go on hbi's website and see these guys right here these are the machined bulletproof diffs so these are the obviously guys the ring and pinions again. now again we are going to get more into that stuff guys in the second video we're going to talk about the parts that i picked up for the truck not a lot it's not like i've gone out and gone crazy this isn't some big massive build or anything it's just the parts needed, in my opinion, to get this truck up and running the way it should be. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, guys, quickly are the tires. The tires have a great feel to them. It is a very sticky compound. I think they're going to provide a ton of grip. It would have been nice if they looked a little bit more scale. So they were looking something more like a BFG, a mud tire or whatever. Something that looked more like an actual truck tire. But I do know from experience in running these type of almost pin style tires that they do provide a lot of grip and a lot of different situations. You just don't really want to get out on the pavement and start mashing on this thing because that will wear these things down pretty quick. But they do feel, guys, very good. The foams themselves, guys, also feel really good. Not too stiff, not too firm, not too soft, none of that stuff going on. So I probably will stick with running these tires. But guys, that is it for this video. A lot I wanted to cover because even though this truck has been out for two years, when I was talking to, you know, some of my friends and, and guys online and other creators, you can tell nobody knows about this truck or they don't even have any interest in it. They've seen those earlier videos and kind of just were like, you know what, we don't want to touch it. So I kind of took a little bit more and kind of dove, you know, in depth. I got a little bit more in depth in this video just to show everything that I wanted to show about the truck. And again, that's why there's going to be kind of a part two because this video would go on for another 15, 20 minutes and I don't want that to happen. So guys... Again, I am so friggin' happy. This truck looks incredible. I can't talk about driving it until I actually get out and start running it. I'm waiting on my solder. I'm also, guys, waiting on the condition. So that's the unfortunate thing right now with all the trucks that I've got lately. So from the Big Rock to the Asuga to the Kagama to the Mojave 4S and now the Savage X is that I have horrible conditions. It's cold. It's slippery. Putting traction down, all that kind of fun stuff doesn't really happen. So... Hopefully we will get out in the next few days just to give this thing a quick run. Might even be on 4S, I'm not sure. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a fantastic day.